and welcome to Red Risks Media. This is a live event, things can go wrong. Please stick with us while we try and sort some of those gremlins out. We live stream to LinkedIn, to YouTube and to Twitter, sometimes to Facebook. So please do join us on these live events. We'd welcome you to subscribe to our newsletter. No spam, I promise. It's only about the live events that are coming up. Now, enough of that. Let's just get on with the show. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I welcome you to our Red Risk Live show. And today we have a special guest. We will be talking about Nibosh. And we will be talking about Nibosh future qualifications, assessments. Should you have any questions, please feel free. We have a chat. Feel free to ask your questions. And I'm sure we will try to answer most of your questions today. And my guest is, is Matt Powell Howard, who is the head of learning and partnership in Nibosh. So let me run the introduction and intro on Matt. Matt Powell Howard graduated in safety and environmental management from the University of Hull and holds a Master of Arts degree in education from the University of York. Matt worked initially in the chemical process industry in the UK for a number of top tier coma sites before moving on to HSC roles in consultancy, manufacturing, construction, quarrying and the hydrocarbon industries. Matt joined Nibosh in 2006 and has held various roles during that time. Matt is currently the Nibosh Head of Learning and Partnerships with responsibility for the development of partnered Nibosh products and qualifications. Matt has over 20 years of experience in HSC and is a chartered safety and health practitioner. Welcome to the show, Matt Powell Howard. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'll be joining Hello, today with my stream team members. So welcome, Charlie. Welcome, team. And of course, Hello. welcome, Matt. Hey, yeah. Uh, great to be here. Yes, Hello, good Matt. to be here. So, Nibosh, and I'm, I would like to be very honest with you. I'm very proud to talk about Nibos today because I'm a learning partner, because I'm a, I'm a holder of Nibosh qualifications. But I'm sure there's so many people around the globe. Maybe they've heard about Nibosh, maybe they've got the questions about Nibosh qualifications. Today, we're talking about 50, over 55,000 learners every year gaining Nibosh qualifications. We're talking about 33 qualifications developed so far. So again, should you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. So Matt, welcome. Welcome very much. Um, I think the first question, um, please, team and Charlie, join me. <laughs> should you have any questions? But I think as an introduction to Nibos, uh, during our stream team meeting, Jorge, who is a stream team member, he told me that He've never ever heard about Nibos before. And we're telling that Nibos is a global standard. Now I do, be, do believe in that. And it has it's a globally recognized qualification, recognized by many organizations. Matt, give us an introduction to Nibos, a very short one. Well, you are quite right. We are, I would say, I feel very confident saying this. We are the leading brand when it comes to competency-based health and safety and environmental. Uh, environmental less so, but certainly health and safety related qualifications. We do our assessments, I think, well, last year was an anomaly, wasn't it? But let's gloss over 2020, but under normal times, and even so, last year we were still very, very busy. 130-ish countries around the world, we tend to follow um, hydrocarbons, construction, heavy engineering, typically outside of the UK. In the UK, it's a more diverse background than people who undertake our qualifications. But um, yeah, it's the springboard to a career in health and safety management by undertaking Nibosh Quals. And we work very hard with local government um, uh, throughout the world um, in getting our qualifications recognized uh, as, a, as, a, well, as a badge of, of quality when it comes to, to health and safety knowledge, understanding, application. Um, and we're a charity, fundamentally, you know, an old school examination tell us, board. Tell us more about this charity, man. <laughs> so we, our purpose is to improve uh, the world of work in terms of health, safety, environmental, well-being and risk-based uh, competency. So wherever people can undertake our qualifications delivered by our network of expert training providers, and you, Janet, you mentioned you're, you're one of them, um, 
then we can really bring some some quality and some assurance within the workplaces where these people are working. Um, so it's twofold, really. People uh, look to hire um, individuals who have NEBOSH qualifications because they know they have that 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 benchmark of quality behind them, and people voluntarily study our qualifications as well because they want to progress their careers. And it was certainly the case for myself. You know, you mentioned in the intro there, Sonny mentioned I was working in in chemical industry. I was um, uh, old, you know, shop steward. I started out of the, in a union background, saw the opportunity within health and safety. It was something I wanted to pursue. And Nibosh got me to where I am now. So I was Nibosh qualified long before I actually started working for Nibosh. So it gives you it gives you options, Nibosh qualifications. Yeah, I think um, the start goes up to September 1979. This is where this history started. 33 qualifications. Charlie, Charlie, you raised your hand. Do you have a question for Matt? Um, well, I've got a variety. <laughs> nice to see you, Matt. Uh, and you, Charlie. Yeah. Um, I, I've got a variety of, of, of questions. I, I give you a lot, but I, I work predominantly. We were talking about this on screen, off screen, just before you came on. I work or have worked predominantly over the last eight to ten years uh, in the Middle East, and um, we were saying that the this this global aspect of of Nibosh versus this sort of UK centric way of of people breaking into the occupational health and safety profession is in the UK you've got a variety of options um, yep. um, and, and obviously quality and, and high standards are, are absolutely paramount however the, 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 the further out the further you spread uh, uh, around the different countries the, the that lack of that integrity and the gold standard and the quality aspect I'm, I'm being generalizing here tends yeah. to drop off and but pretty much over the last eight to ten years everyone that I come in contact with that wants to move forward uh, they've either got an IOSH managing safely or got some variety of other qualifications and they, they, they will predominantly want to go through the NEBOSH IGC route um, and, and, and uh, there's two guys that I've worked with recently uh, on a previous project. The, the two of them have just started doing their Nibosh IGC, IGC through a, a training provider in, in Riyadh. Um, so th I think one of the things that I, that, that I want to look at here, Matt, is do you, first of all, do you see a decline in UK requirements for Nibosh with that? With, on the, with the opposite, with a, a rise of Nibosh requirements uh, out with the UK. Um, because, we were, again, we were talking about this off screen, is that there's a variety of routes in mm. to the occupational health and safety profession within the UK. You can either do your degree or you can do your NVQ or, or whatever it is, but there are a variety of processes. But, again, once you come out of that, uh, the, the UK-centric, if you will, the, 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 the options start to become... Limited. So I'm, I'm really interested if you've seen a, a perhaps a drop off with the, the basics at Nibosh in general, all that sort of thing, compared with a, an uptick um, globally. No, I mean, you've alluded to a few things there, really, Charlie. I, sure. And I absolutely agree with you. Was You're starting from a different place sometimes internationally, you know, mm. in terms of what's available, where the standard is as well, yeah. you know, um, I'm, I would say caveat that with Sanam to some of the best health and safety practice I've seen have been in places like in in Bahrain GPIC do amazing stuff and then yeah. you've got some really horrible standards as you will have seen Charlie in your yeah, travels sure. I'm sure yeah, yeah. the UK our market has actually been we, we get we get some growth year on year you know it's still fine we're not seeing any tailing off I'm very pleased to say right, okay. Inter, inter, internationally in some countries the growth was well about say i've been here a long time now so about 10 years ago there was exponential growth when people really started recognizing the value that you know not just what nebosh qualifications can bring but actually that they are people are obligated to look after their people course, and if yeah. they look after them properly they'll get dividends so um without you know we all know that we yeah. the out the, you know you it's, it's a good thing yeah, it improves sure. quality it improves la 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 internationally um we find our learners interestingly tend to be younger internationally than they are in the uk yeah, yeah. so actually the demographic can be quite different as well so internationally a lot of people might already have a first degree 
before they then, you know, and, and some people won't have much as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's fascinating actually where learners come from internationally. Some people do it because they want a career. Some people, they do it because they want a way out of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's not too different actually from, from the UK, but we find yeah. our demographic tends to be a bit older. It's still more atypically somebody with an engineering bias, Again, this is changing, and this is what makes it interesting in the UK. Sure. Yeah. When I first started, typically it was a male learner aged between 35 and 45 uh, looking to start a, an almost a second or third career right. going down the health right. and safety route. Yeah. And, and we do find, you'll know this as well, health and safety practitioners in the UK typically tend to be aspiring towards that diploma level degree master's level type qualification yeah, mvq yeah. mvq 56 internationally we're still in a place where certificate level qualifications you can still get fairly senior roles and you may not progress onto that diploma level qualification again right. that's changing and our numbers for the international diploma uh you know continue to to, to grow and grow and grow so um it doesn't seem to stay very static internationally is the honest answer. It, right, it changes okay. and it can differ from country to country. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, the Middle East, because we follow, you know, the hydrocarbon industry, we work very hard to get right. our qualifications recognized. Okay. The Middle East is our biggest region in terms of geographical reach. Right. Um, as a single country, the UK still performs incredibly well for us. So we, that, but whenever we develop a UK based qualification, we now, always have an international variant as well because it's so right. important to us. Right. We are an international organization and that's right. firmly how we position ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we're based in Leicester, you know, <laughs> we, we, we are an international organization and we, yeah. and we have yeah. that footprint. And we have our footprint largely through our network of providers, you know, they do an amazing job for us. Right. So I, don't okay. that, I don't know if that answered your question, but the well, UK yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, as well. But... I'm sure Tim and Jeanette will, will agree with me. I think this is wide ranging, and I don't, I don't think it's, we're going to sort of pigeonhole a lot of a lot of things because what I see is a a downturn in sort of Dubai. Dubai construction is kind of tailing off a little bit, and we're all of a sudden now Saudi Arabia with this 2030 vision, yeah. the, 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 the work is going to skyrocket. Exactly. Residential mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, uh, hydrocarbons, airports, hospitals, you name it. There is such a huge drive now to improve the infrastructure within within Saudi Arabia, yeah. particularly within that that sort of neom area and the and the north um, the northwest and also the that that sort of trifecta of sort of Riyadh, Dammam, and and, and Jeddah and and. Karen, is that okay? Uh, I'll just want to say that our chat is very active. Oh, go on. Uh, yeah, yeah, so many people joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah. I see that some of them are even our learners. So uh -huh. happy to see you. Uh, so I would like to say thank you to Darlington, Mohammed, Louisa, Pavel. Uh, so everyone, welcome. Darren. So, uh, so, and there is a question, the first question match for you. So will the new to be released as a five certification suite of qualifications fall below the level of NIBOSH five qualification currently available? I, I honestly don't know anything about that. I know that they're, they're doing a, a certificate through to diploma, I think. Other than that, I honestly, I haven't looked at it. You know, there are, there are actually, as I think Charlie alluded to a moment ago, there's such a choice now when it comes to um, health and safety qualifications. So, it's a, in some ways, it's a buyer's market. They need to decide what they want in terms of recognition, in terms of um, uh, community standing. I mean, we often get tr people try to draw us into to defaming other people's products. And, and actually, some people choose to operate like that. We don't. You know, it's it, you have to look at what you want from a product and what you need. And, and I always direct people to a syllabus and go, look, take out look at the learning outcomes look at the assessment method methodology how do you learn best um and what recognitions does that qualification and that product have within the market and that should guide somebody in terms of, of a product but in terms of of talking about other people's products i couldn't comment i think ours are great i know what effort goes into them not unsurprisingly but yeah i i it, it, I don't think that product's been released yet. Anyway, Janet, I think it's sort of a coming soon type thing. So, I just would like to okay. mention everyone um, who's listening that Nibosh provides different level of qualification. I think it's worth mentioning that starting from award, certification, diploma, 
all the way to the master's degree. That's why take your time, visit the website and you have a lot of information and it's clearly written about the expectation, the syllabus. But uh, taking that note, I would like to uh, welcome our stream new member of our stream team, Tim. Hi, Tim. And welcome Hi. to your first show. Uh, welcome. Um, uh, Tim, do you have any questions? Because after that, I would like to take more questions from the chat. Yeah, and um, Matt, it's very, very good to meet you. Um, and you one too. of the things I was interested in, I gather that Nibosh have introduced a scholarship for aspiring health and safety professionals. Uh, it would be interesting just to hear a bit more about that and how that's come about. Yeah, no, I'm really, I'm actually one of the judges on that as well, Tim. So I'm really happy right. to talk about it. Yeah, you know, it. this sits, this sits, you know, it's right up our street in terms of our charitable remit, really, giving people the opportunity to get a, to get a, well, a fully funded diploma, you know. So um, I wish I'd, I wish I knew the question was coming because I would have given you an idea of the type of questions that we've asked within, within terms of the, uh, within terms, terms of the uh, scholarship program. But there's a really clear criteria written. It's open to everybody, wherever mm -hmm. they are in the world. You know, if you, if you, if you are successful in terms of the application. Um, and you're based internationally, then it's the international diploma for you. So um, it's really nice to give something. For a while, we've sponsored um, products on for Safety Groups UK. Uh, yeah. Sorry, tell a lie for the charity Safety Group. So we we would fund um, the assessment costs, and we'd work with a learning partner to provide training for um, somebody within the charity sector. Sector, and that still stands. Um, but this is this is specifically for the diploma for somebody who has a. a Key, a clear career goal, something they would absolutely like to um, focus their efforts in, in terms of the assignments. Um, and, and, you know, just someone who's really aspiring and somebody who inspires us when we go through the, the application. So we're, we've had, a, we've had a, a very good response so far, actually, Tim, as you can imagine. Some yeah. people, unfortunately, aren't reading the application as, as well as they could. So, you know, there's a bit of a, a, a you know, a, a call going down before it gets to the, to the, um to actually the judging panel but we'll be judging that later in may i think um and yeah you know the, the the other panelists are great you know we've we've got a really good team together and everybody's so excited to be part of it which is fab as well so um we're hoping certainly our chief exec chris payne is something that we can we can um continue to offer and maybe even grow it as a as an annual thing we'll have to see how it goes but yeah it's it, it's really nice, especially in the light of, of, of where we all are and the, and the challenging time people have had. Some people who might not be able to access that training otherwise without the funding. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. True, it's it's an absolutely great opportunity. Oh, there is a question from Vince uh, about the competency. What is the sense is a mix of skill, knowledge, ability, training, experience. How far does NIBOR certificate and NIBOR diploma take the candidate in the competency journey? Um, very well, good question. Yeah, there no, is a good question. You will have seen now that that the direction our assessments are going are very much around application based. And now we would always have argued before we went down the, the new assessment methodology we do with the open book assessments, um, they were always based on, on um, uh, comp application of learning, you know, putting yourself in a certain scenario and providing a response to that based on the controls or the hazards you'd be presented with. Where we're hamstrung is is there's still an awful lot of myths out there about Nibosh that people like to continue to push out that it's a memory game that it's this that it's that and that's you know just lazy to be honest it's not been that way for for years and years and years um, there are times when as practitioners we actually do need an element of recall we just do despite what somebody has told you you're going to be found lacking if you aren't able at certain times to be very clear where something's in breach, but actually the role of the practitioner is changing. And the days of sure. somebody walking around with a copy of Redgrave under their arm, you know, some of us all, all maybe remember that, you know, that old kind of officer type role, those days are long gone. And now we are expected to have baby great communicators to be able to put a business case together, you know, all these key skills. And actually yeah. the diploma caters for that as much as it does giving you that solid technical expertise as well. Um, and with the new site, the new way we assess the uh, international <laughs> certificate, it's all application based because it's based on a on a case study. Certainly, there might be an instance when you go, OK, tell us how you would control contractors. And actually, it's very difficult to do that in an application based because the way you control contractors it doesn't matter if you're working in a refinery in terms of selection. Yeah. 
or if you're working in the food industry, you know, you're going to do those pre-checks, which are broadly similar. So there is always going to be a small element of, of um, uh, very factual based content we look for, but everything else will be application based. And that is, you know, helps inform that, that, that competency approach. The, the issue I have, and this is my own particular ax I have to grind, is that sometimes someone will come to me and go, oh, we've taken this person on in a role. They've got the NIBOSH certificate and they don't know anything. And you go, okay, so what form of, of <laughs> interview did you go through? What checks did you go? You know, did you speak to that? Did a, and actually some people are hired purely off the back of having a NIBOSH qualification. Well, if you hire anybody off the back of just having a qualification, I would question that, you know, yeah. so, exactly. per, you know, personal. Um, uh, yeah, we have so many questions, Matt, and here's the question from Mal, but uh, coming back to your uh, comment on the OBE, Open Book Examination, I think we have a lot of questions about that, and I remember August 2020, there was a lot of questions and discussions going everywhere in social media between learning providers, Open Book Examination, it's about quality, how we're going to assess our qualifications, <coughs> that level of standard, or we're used to golden standard of uh, NIBOSH qualifications. Uh, I'm talking as a provider right now to you, Matt, that I've been told when I joined NIBOSH that it's easy to get an approval to be a learning provider, but it's very difficult to maintain that uh, that level of uh, learning provider because of the quality control. But I don't want to talk for you, Matt. Tell us more about, because we have so many questions now from Mohammed uh, talking about the open book examination. Why do I have to go through, <laughs> what is that, since Nibosh IDC is an open book examination, why do I have to go through an institute to study? So, and many, many, many more questions I have on the chat with regards to the open book examination yeah well when it comes to to doing the study we need to be very clear about the people who we are contracting with so our, our learning partners and i'm i you know many many moons ago i used to be the accreditation manager so things have changed a lot since then my, my another one of my colleagues now heads up our learner partner quality so i'm not 100 percent up to speed with with what our requirements are currently but in terms of being a learner what i would say is you learn so much from being with a great tutor team, you learn an awful lot from your fellow delegates on the course, you know, and, and actually a great tutor will allow that debate and that discussion, be it online via e-learning or be it in the classroom or live online. Um, your learning partner is there to help, guide, support, mentor, take you through, and, and actually the controls are in place for that to be a great experience. That's why we, we go down that route. There's an added value. It also protects from malpractice because we know the person doing the assessment is the one who's been through the training. All those controls are there for that reason. And, and you know, and that's just the system. Now, um, in terms of the open book, we have wanted to change assessments within terms of the International General Certificate and the National General Certificate for a long time. But the, the um, there was always a, a, um, a pushback in terms of what would be acceptable um, from our network of providers and from our previous people who responded. Actually, COVID gave us the reason and the impetus to change how we assess. It's just as robust as the written exams. It's just different. And I think that's what upsets people. When you just change something, it seems to send people into a tailspin. But interestingly, now, when we first changed it, everyone was up in arms. Now people have seen those assessments and they can see how we are assessing the International General Certificate and the National General Certificate. They can see that the standard is the same. And actually, it's now going the other way where people are saying, and, and I know I sound like I'm putting a positive spin on this, we are never going to please all of the people yeah, all of sure. the time. And, and it's pointless even trying, but I would say, you know, from an assessment perspective, it's what we do, it's what we're ex experts in. It's a great vehicle and it really does test understanding and pass rates have remained broadly the same as well, you know, so it's not been without its challenges for our learning partners. It's not been without our challenges for our learners, but it's working and it's working really well and people are having a great opportunity to show what they know. So. Yeah, there is another question from Mohammed, but I think we partially answered that question. For everyone who is listening and uh, you don't have an idea what we're talking about, just for your information, NIBOS switched in August 2020 from individualated examination to the open book examination. 
and the main focus and the main change was about the practical application of your knowledge and not only theory. But I can assure you that the quality is there and the standards are there. But uh, another question, uh, Tim, I think you had another question, if I remember well. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the way the discussion is going, it generates lots of opportunity for questions, but not much appreciated. Matt, I was, I was interested in the, the fact that you've now got a process safety certificate yep. and process safety management. And I was thinking about, given the growth in offshore wind, is there any opportunity or are there any thoughts about moving to support that particular environment? Yeah, it's a great question, Tim, actually. And it's something that I've I've spent a bit of time in the past looking at as well. So um, offshore winds really, it, I first looked at it probably about 10 years ago, actually. And it, and it seemed a bit that the standards were still being decided on and how people were. It was almost like HSE said to the to the to the industry, go on then you tell us how you're going to do this safely that really threw the gauntlet down it was a very different approach to what you do in in terms of you know onshore process safety where it's you know incredibly regulated with it being a brand new industry if you like yeah. th they were saying well what's the standard and then there seemed to be lots of conflicting groups all sort of battling for the upper hand and it was quite difficult to see um where the standard was you know normally it's quite you know we can go to hsc guidance we can go to ISO standards, we can go to the ILO and go, right, where is the standard? But it, only, it seems to be now that, that there seems to be a clearer proposition. So only only recently, probably, I've lost track of time because last year was so weird. Um, I think it was last year I met with Siemens to start looking again to see where, mm. you know, to see whether or not we could we could occupy a space within, within renewables and certainly offshore and onshore and, yeah. and try to get a feel for what the footfall's like. I mean, I'm, I wasn't entirely clear how many people work in that in that field? You know, looking at photovoltaics, for example, in in um, and Charlie will know this. You know, these yeah. huge sort of solar uh, farms that they have in, say, Saudi. Yeah. There's probably only about five people work there, and the rest is sort of security. You know, because yeah. it's it's a uh, yeah yeah. Com you know, whenever we produce something, first and foremost, it needs to be academically sound. Secondly, of course, there needs to be a commercial need a need and requirement for it. Otherwise, it, it will be an expensive failure. So really open to having that conversation tim with anybody who still wants to talk yeah. to us i think it's a lovely opportunity and it's important work and, yeah. and let's face it renewables wind is part of the solution you know it really is yeah. so, Very much so. Now, i think um, there's some interesting interfaces there as well because you've got wind farm operators so you've got the the transportation and uh, yep. construction offshore then you, you know, within the construction bit you've got uh, a lot of uh, mariners involved you've got imca uh, who may well be interested in this sort of thing as well. So I think there's a, 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 a huge amount of potential there because they are similar but slightly new hazards. Yeah, and I think you've alluded to two things. I think there's almost two products, isn't there? There's there's the construction phase and then there's the operations phase, you know, and, it, and it's kind of like, yeah. you know, almost two products. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, yeah, we're really open to having that. We haven't, mm -hmm. we haven't got anywhere with it, Tim, in all honesty, yeah. at the minute. But... Um, I think it's one of those ones that we'll keep revisiting until we do get somewhere with it. There's there's an absolute market, I think, somewhere along the line, be it partnered or otherwise. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Uh, there is another question from Vince, and we're going to answer that question. But I would like to stop on, on that discussion with Siemens and uh, uh, with other partners. So, Matt, how qualifications are developed and how do you set that Co co cooperation with different partners locally internationally like uh, with the uh, IOSH with HSC because I'm looking at the number of new certification new qualifications could you tell me could you tell us more about how qualifications are developed how do you cooperate with them yeah so I, I mean some of it is is just really just looking to see where the groundswell for for where we can offer some value actually is so the PSM qualification is a good example that Tim just mentioned. Um, that started off with me going out to talk to to, to employers who were the end users of our products um, across, you know, throughout the UK and internationally to see what they 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 thought of the of the oil and gas certificate that we also offer. 
And generally, they felt the oil and gas certificate offered offered really good value uh, and quality. However, what they wanted was more of a focus on process safety management. So mm -hmm. off the back of that, I started pulling together, and that's my background as a, as a process op when I was a boy. I started pulling together a process safety uh, certificate, looking at you know best practice, standards, et cetera. And at the same time, we were talking to HC about working together. So that's how that then morphed into a joint product. But in terms of, of producing a specification, what we do not do is work in isolation because it, there's no way you'll know whether or not it's right. You know, just having the opinion of me, you know, oh yeah, I know this, this is my environment. You know, you're not gonna, the more somebody looks at something and the more people look at something to a point, to a point, the better a product will be 100%. So when we develop a, a new syllabus, we then bring together a panel of employers and we test that syllabus with those employers to make sure that they think it is valid, that it offers that it offers value, and it is gonna solve a problem within the world of work. That's how we do it. And then when we have that, we, we sometimes pilot if it's complex. So the PSM qualification was piloted and we piloted that in the UK, we piloted it internationally. And actually off the back of the pilot, we changed the assessment because the assessment wasn't quite right. Um, we did a few, brought the panel back together, reported on the pilot, tweaked the syllabus, and then it's launched as a product. You know, and there's lots of other boring meetings around that, making sure that we, we get the level right and we get it approved when required by our regulator SQA. And then the approvals process from people like IOSH, if it's a, a diploma or a certificate, um, BCSP, you know, all these other very, very important organizations. That's just all part of the development process to get their recognition and that, that sort of seal on it as well. But it, it, it involves meeting with, developing a qualification involves meeting with lots of employers and asking the opinion of our past learners, both successful and unsuccessful, I should say as well. Because if you just ask, if you're doing it to an existing product and you want to change it because it's up for review and you ask everybody who already holds that qualification they will tell you not to change anything and that is perfect. And for goodness sake, don't change the assessment. It, you know, it's had, so, and if you go to, to um, unsuccessful learners, not unsurprisingly, they yeah. generally have an issue with the exam, but often both groups have the same thoughts in terms of the syllabus and what needs to change, what, what's missing, what is, you know, what should remain. So it's just lots and lots of consultation. If you do something in isolation, you end up with a not very good product. Is, a, is, the, is the honest answer. Uh, team Charlie, just feel free to join. But there is a sure. one question I would like to take. Darlington, he's from Africa, I guess. Nigeria, sorry. If there is a there, there is a master's degree distance learning, can someone do it from Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. I would say the costs um, internationally um, can be very expensive. It's just the way the UK education university system is set up. But we have... Um, I, I do some academic supervision on the Hull Masters and we do have some international learners. Um, Brexit hasn't done us any favors, unfortunately. Some of the costs have now gone up for, for no. European or European uh, students, but it's absolutely possible. We get quite a few learners from out of the Middle East. We haven't had anybody yet from Nigeria. It'd be fantastic to have somebody from Nigeria. We work with the British Council in, in you know, sort of uh, um, getting guarantees regarding ID and that sort of thing. But all, nearly all of the masters actually can be taught remotely. Um, and it's very, it's very driven by, um, you know, self-learning actually, the, the diploma, it's the nature of doing a, a the masters, it's the nature of doing a master's yeah. qualification. These so. are the, th the, you've got three um, res, haven't you? Because I, I didn't know about this, I did a bit of sort of uh, research during the week there, but there's three, there's three different um, there's, isn't there, there's, there's, six, there's six, oh, six different now. six six right. different degrees, Charlie. Yeah. So right. we do a uh, we do we do the MRES, and I think people don't um, uh, don't fully understand about that that the, the MRES is, is is really prestigious in itself, but it's very yeah, sure. it's very driven on on one sort of big research product actually um, yeah. uh, a dissertation. So if somebody's got a particular thing they really want to explore in depth, then they do the first sort of six months is around. Is around research methodology and then you get much more into into sort of yeah, scoping sure. your dissertation but yeah. we do where it's missed where it's slightly confusing is the mres is an mres in in health and safety an mres in health safety and environmental management and an That's mres right. in environment and then we do msc uh, masters of science variants as well with all right. where right. again msc in you know 
health and safety, health, safety, environmental management, and and um, right. environmental management. But the the MSCs is much more taught. Is, is there's a lot more taught modules, so you right. get into management systems more readily, mental health, corporate social responsibility, which is the one I teach on, right. and it and it's sort your last six months then when you focus on your actual research dissertation. Yeah. Okay. So we've been doing them now for about. Blimey, it must be seven or eight years now. I think. Right. I think so. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's certainly new to me. I didn't. I didn't realize that you did that because it's certainly if you go on to some of your learning providers' websites, uh, the, 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 you, you don't really see that. You see the the diploma and environmental yeah. and, fire and, and all that sort of stuff. Just just staying on that subject, and in, in, in case there's anybody uh, uh, interested in this, is. Is there a set criteria that you you can't go on the MRes unless you've already got a master's or an advanced degree, or can you not? Uh, uh, if you're going to do it, do you have to have the diploma? Because I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions coming in yeah. about that. You know. So, so uh, Charlie, to, just to just to be clear, that it's only the University of Hull who can offer the masters because right. they're the only they're they're the only ones who have degree awarding powers. Right. So, so you can you can apply for degree awarding powers. Incredibly expensive, um, and it's never something that we've we've pursued. But actually, the University of Hull that they award the degree but it's right. a Nibosh University of Hull degree um uh you the only prerequisites is that we look for is a diploma or similar so if somebody has a level five six mvq right. um they'd be accepted onto that mres uh, msc variant or or if somebody comes down the degree route you know yeah. that that's that's an option as well but we okay. look for we just look for equivalence to a to a a Nibosh diploma yeah. and if they can demonstrate that then they can get onto the onto the degrees I mean I would okay. say you know they're tough you know this is this is sort oh, of two, yeah, two, two years of yes. solid of solid yeah. study so people yeah, shouldn't do it, people yeah. shouldn't do it lightly um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they some of the dissertations that people are doing are, are incredible and right. um, yeah the, the quality is fantastic actually right. but there's right. loads of support but um, it's, it really is, you know, it's accessible. And I, I think some people will probably be in their lives where they think, well, I'm never going to be able to own a, hold a degree level. You know, I know that our our Nibosh diploma is actually level 10. So that is degree yeah, yeah, level. Yeah. But it, obviously a number of hours and, to, you know, it's very different. It's a very different thing. So um, to you doing the whole masters gives you that opportunity. And there are other people as well who recognize the Nibosh diploma onto masters. I think Loughborough do and right. uh, Portsmouth do. So there are a few out there. And internationally, we're always open to working with an international university as well to see about whether we can do something together. Right. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're a really fascinating process. Actually. Yeah, we have so many questions, Matt, coming in. And the first question I would like to take about the environmental diploma. From Nathan, when will the environmental certificate diploma change to the new open book standard? Yeah, good question. We're we're working on them at the moment, actually, Jeanette. So you'll see all of our products. Um, perish the thought that we ever have another um, global pandemic, but um, certainly <laughs> learners will be able to access our assessments. You know, that that's the direction of travel for us now. Um, we're pursuing them actively at the moment. I think there's a new environmental certificate being worked on uh, currently. Um, you know, there'll be obviously options for people to move across anyway. But um, uh, the environmental diploma, um, the environmental certificate, process safety management, all the products we have left that still require you to go and sit in an examination venue, um, <coughs> excuse me, are currently being looked at at the moment. Um, and will be and will be released as soon as possible, but obviously we can't release new assessments until we've tested them, until we're absolutely sure that they're what we want them to be. So watch this space is the answer. Okay. Matt, there is a question from Mal. Hi, Mal. Mal is our uh, stream team member. So I worked offshore for ten plus years. The only requirement today is a GWO. For, I think we partially covered that with discussion with team. But uh, is there any comment on that? Um, I mean, I, we're never going to be able to change sort of industry at, at large in terms of what people, what requirements people want. Um, the process safety qualification and the and the renewables qualification, if we ever do one, really is there to develop cultural change within within that environment where, where it's being adopted so you know we're, we're always again looking to work with with organizations to see whether or not we can do it in company for them or, or elsewhere 
Um, we we have toyed in the past with doing safety passports and that sort of thing, um, but there is a raft of them out there that are already providing that solution actually. Yeah. So um, I, I think it can differ massively by organization in terms of what they expect and what they need. I'm sure Tim Charlie and yourself have seen this, Janet. You know, the better organizations are very clear in terms of their minimum standards. And that's that's where we engage with them really to get our quals recognized on competency matrices to sort of say actually this might be this might be acceptable in other areas, but this is what we want in terms of competency of our people. Um, it's, so it's interesting what you're because uh, we 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 talked about this just before we came on screen, uh, and you, 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 you've mentioned competency a few times, and, it, and it's obviously driving the, the way that Nibosh is going in the open book exam and things like that. Um, what's the future with regards to Nibosh? For instance, in the UK, you've now got the NCQR Level 6 diploma, which is a bit of a hybrid between exam practical application and, and it's become and it and it's very 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 popular um is nebosh is there a desire for nebosh to sort of sidestep or move into nvq territory or or do something similar no, or no no i think the the ncrq product again without sort of what they were very clever with was that when you're a new entrant to a market yeah um, and you're not known. What you are is disruptive, and they were very disruptive <laughs> right, when, they, okay. when, when 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 they when they started. Is that in a good way or a bad way? Um, I would. I personally would have done things differently, but right. hey, you know they've been successful in it, so good on them. Right. And actually, yeah. those people who I know have undertaken the NCRQ product, they've been pleased with it. So you know, I, I say I'm, I I will not. You know. We never sure. do. As Nibosh, get involved yeah. in defaming yeah. Yeah. other people's products. You know, let them. Okay. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Yeah. However, however, with the new that they, they, their assessments are based on case studies. You know, right. despite what the, some of the advertiser might say, you know, it's based on re, they're based on case studies. They're not based on you going out into a your own workplace, whatever. Right. Um, and actually, our new diplomas have been released. And our diplomas are based on case studies and actually right. based okay. on application in the workplace as well. Right. So. Yeah. Um, MVQs for a long time, completely different product, as you know. And actually, the MVQ, yeah. Yeah. the MVQ market is huge. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for some people, MVQs are a perfect product for them in terms of assessment because they may not re they may not like that that sort of assignment driven type approach. They would much rather demonstrate what it is they do. The, the only issue with NC, um, MVQs is that you're demonstrating your knowledge and understanding in a particular industry or environment. Sure. And sometimes you're going to struggle to demonstrate a wider yeah, understanding. A wider, yeah, yeah, understand, yeah, sure. But it goes back to the point I made a moment ago, really, is that you need to decide as a learner what it is you want from a product and yeah. what you want in terms of recognition. And all I can say about Nibosh products is, is that when somebody has a Nibosh qualification, they don't feel the need to justify it. No. And that's not always the case with other products that are out okay, there. Okay, that's a good point. And, that, that's, and, that's, point. Yeah. and, that, and that's probably about as strong as I'm prepared to go, Charlie, if that's... Uh, <laughs> well, not if that's okay, sport, in any, any yeah. shape or form, any shape or form. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, would, I, do uh, I can only support you, Matt, on that. <laughs> oh, thanks, Janet. Because, yeah. and I'm not supporting not because being as a learning provider, just because I follow our learners. So we have 400 learners and they do store, uh, share their stories and their stories are successful. And I think here uh, it's important to mention that Nimosh provides an opportunity for someone around the globe who doesn't have any other chances to do any other courses. And if they want to start their career in health and safety, that's a very good start for anyone. And we can see that. Maybe maybe it's not in UK, but you can see it in Poland, Ukraine, Kazakhstan. You can see it in India. So answering that question, I believe that I'll fully support you, Matt, on that. Yeah. It's like there is no questions. But we still have some questions. And I would like to put, yeah, from Jorge question. Jorge is our stream team member. Does Nibosh recognize other certificates from other countries if a person would like to access the certificate of Nibosh? Uh, I mean, we don't do any prior recognized prior learning of any other's products because you, ca you can't tell what the what the assessment methodology is behind it. Um, uh, 
a few years ago, Ofqual, who was one of the regulators in, 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 in England, they, they started looking to see about how you can do recognized prior learning um, and almost that like you'd get credits if you did other people's qualifications. And uh, it was going to be massively complex, cause huge problems for our learning partners. Um, but ultimately, we would we would struggle to be satisfied that people have been i'm sorry the lighting's so bad here by the way um yeah, the sun's just coming down um uh, we need to be assured that people have been through the same route they've had the same learning that learning out outcomes similar have been have been tested so no we don't we don't recognize um obviously we recognize the value in other people's le um, uh, qualifications but they don't they don't lead to any sort of um uh, fast tracking with our own forms of assessment. Sometimes you can, if people have got, for example, um, if they're CSP recognized in the States, they can get fast track through to the assessments on the diploma. Sure. However, they still need to do the assessments. Yeah, um, sure. You know, that's, that's, that's unequivocal. So Jenny, mm -hmm. I just wanted to pick up on a point you said about, about Nibosh quals, and I don't know if it helps people. Um, but, you know, I often reflect on my own route through, I, I was a process op. So process operator, um, you know, doing doing okay, quite enjoying, I'm just gonna move my chair so I'm gonna stop being blinded. Um, so, um, uh, you know, doing okay in my, in, my, in my career, but I hadn't, I didn't have many options, you know, and that was the issue. And the reason, yeah. why, and then I started doing a Nibosh National Diploma Certificate and then, you know, I'm so old, I did the diploma part one and the diploma part two and the environmental diploma. And that ultimately led me towards a degree and da, da, da. But Nibosh qualifications gave me the career I've had. And it's taken me to places in the world. You know, Charlie, I know you're well-traveled, Tim. I, I'm yeah. not sure what your background is, but, um, you know, it, it, it just opens doors for you professionally. Exactly. Um, uh, and and it changes your outlook on life actually and we come up against that time and time again where people just say look i did an ebrush qualification qualifications and it gave me options and it gave me a career i never thought i'd have and and without you know sort of getting all you know righteous actually it's an important career to have working in health and safety you know yeah. you're working with people um so wherever there's people there's interest there's challenges there's and ultimately you can do things that can really make a big difference not always not every day not every week not every month but often you can challenge things and um and it and and actually you'll not know what a difference you've made often as well sure. you know so sure. i would say uh, to any yeah, yeah you know um yeah, yeah. Matt, anyway. there's, what, what you were talking about international experience there um, one of the things that just occurred to me if we look at the iso standards and how they've changed in very recent years so you've mm. got 9001 now 45001 what, what was 18001 14001 all using this a very similar nomenclature and all using risk in very very yeah. similar way so i was just wondering is there any anything there that uh new wash are going to get involved with in terms well, of uh, adopting that same commonality yeah well we do, we already do in terms of our our certificate back in the day, Nibosh General and International Certificates, used to be folded. Up for, do you remember the old Popamar model, Tim? It yeah, was yeah, part of HSG yeah. 65. Yeah. That's how we used to. Yeah. That's how we used to structure our, our qualifications, yeah. actually. And then oh. when um, 45,000, oh, actually, when 18,000 came in, 18,000 mm. came in, we changed yeah. it more to a Plan Do Check Act type structure. Mm. Yeah. So that's yeah. and you know and that that's embedded and fundamental to our. Uh, the structure of our certificate level qualifications in terms of risk and how risk is adopted we have a new qualification with the health and safety executive looking at um you know sensible and proportionate risk management but also we're working with the institute of international risk and safety management on a more enterprise risk management type product to get to get um to encourage practitioners to start thinking about the wider risks of their organization like pandemics like supplier chain you know all those all those bits so that's coming out being piloted i think this summer and we'll be launching that product uh kind of sort of early autumn of, of 2021 but yeah risk and, and 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 the profile of risk and the priority of risk certainly with with covid that that was where everybody rushed to on the new on the hc website how do i i know it's yeah, how am I gonna deal with this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i know it's 2021 but people still seem to sort of struggle a little bit with what proportionate means and what sensible means yeah, and yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. um yeah and so we're, we're, we're 
I could see us doing a sweep through, you know, eventually, eventually around that sort of intro. This is what risk assessment means. This is what enterprise risk management means. This is what, you know, because ultimately, I think there's a groundswell now where we're going to start seeing risk directors on boards, you know, where mm. who knows, maybe safety people will be reporting into mm. health and safety yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're in for an interesting 10, 15, 20 years, I think. Well, we'll start going. There is a question, Matt, from Alison about the uh, uh, Masters of Science. How long does it take to complete to have a new bridge it, diploma? Uh, it's a two-year program. So it's a two-year academic cycle. So if somebody started in 2021, they'll be looking to graduate in 2023. Yeah, so um, that was an easy one. More of those. <laughs> <laughs> so greetings to all the international delegates. What kind Changes can we expect in the unis from the latest announcement of NIBOSH International Diploma for Health and Safety Professionals and how this is going to make an impact in our career progression? Thank you. So the diploma, um, we certainly haven't thrown away the old diploma. You know, there was there's some really essential understanding for practitioners in there. But there is some, some new content just to reflect um, uh, the requirements of the blueprint, Irish blueprint, um, Inchpo framework. So I don't know if some of uh, everyone's familiar with with Inchpo, which is the International Safety and Health Practitioner Organisations. They have a framework for um, uh, the skills and understanding that practitioners should have. That's built into the revised diploma. Um, ultimately, you know, we've only got a limited number of hours we can play with. Um, so people will certainly recognise it as a product which is tried, tested recognized um but there is some new content in there as well um and the assessments are um, have been drafted if people are interested they can go onto the nebosh website the syllabus is on there for people to take a look at um but it's not to take away from people who already are diploma qualified you know it's not there to replace <laughs> no, no. that that's a qualification that's there with them for life and as valid as ever uh -huh. uh, so yeah. any link for these courses yeah, well, the, the role of, it depends what what Mohammed means by courses. If he's interested in in the specifications and the syllabuses and the assessment methodologies, they're all available on our website. In terms of accessing the courses, you can also search for our network of learning partners and those who are both running courses and those who are accredited to deliver our content. So, not unsurprisingly, it's the website. It's where we all have to go now, isn't it, yeah. for any information? So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there is another question. Uh, <laughs> so we hear those nominals, including Nibosh Deep. Is that legitimate to use professionally? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm, mine. I think would dip to OSH. I don't know if Tim or Charlie have got any of our quals, but you know, there's people love a post. Love people love a post nominal, don't they? And you know, with you get them on the environmental dip, you get them for the. Dip two, obviously your degrees, yeah. your MAs, whatever. Um, but yeah, they're, they're perfectly fine. I, I can't remember what the diploma post nominal is. I don't think it was the one which Vince just put up there. It, it may be, but yeah, there's a there's a, a clearly defined set of post nominals which are included within the guide, and people why who not? hold the diploma should use them. Yeah, yeah. they're very proud Absolutely. of them. Why not? They need to be proud of that. There is nothing to hide. You know, I, I think that's a very good question you posed there. There, there, I, I've got three. Nibosh quals. Um, that was enough for me, and I, and I did my uh, those three. Um, but I understand we, we one of our regular contributors, a chap called Martin, has got six Nibosh qualifications. And I seen recently somebody maybe even had. There you go, Martin. Uh, Martin Jones has got six, and I, I'm sure I read recently. Perhaps it was even on LinkedIn where somebody might even have gone into double figures. Now that yeah. has got to be. You, you, <laughs> you've got to have some. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do, and this, and and I've really just gone from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, and and it's a, an interesting question. Uh, you must know out there, no names, no pack drill. There must be somebody you know that has got the most Nibosh qualifications. To who, who's the? Some must be somebody sitting at the top of the tree somewhere. We, we yeah, Ch Charlie, you're right. You know, people collect Nibosh quals, yeah, and, uh, sure. and 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 and. Um, the guy I'm thinking of, John Jonathan, actually. Um, I don't know if Jonathan gets invited to many parties, but he jumps on. He jumps on as soon as Nibosh 
Quell's come out and is a um, and actually Jonathan's just got his PhD as well. Wow, so right, okay. a, a guy called Jonathan Backhouse, every qualification we release, Jonathan signs up for it. But there are a right. few like Jonathan. Right. And actually, um, uh, people just really it's almost a hobby for some people, you know, where they go, right, right I just want to I just want to undertake that for lots of other people, you know, me included. I mean, I live and breathe it every day, but um, I, I'd got as far as I needed to and, you know, I like, didn't like, why is that? Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, but yeah. some people, they, 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 they love it and they love that challenge. Just as you often see now, more and more, I find on LinkedIn, people are, you know, grabbing books and giving book recommendations. And it's almost like the same they do with the products. But sometimes yeah. we find that um, lots of practitioners will do our new courses to see whether or not they want it for their own people. Right. So okay. that's why they do it as well. So sometimes right. there's a method. I say method behind the madness. That's not fair to Jonathan. Jonathan's just somebody who just soaks up knowledge. <laughs> but you know, there's there's a few like him who, yeah. who do just ah, oh, that's for me. I'm going to sign up to that and self study right. it. Yeah, so, I, I, um, I think one of the reasons is that I, I think the, the, the you because it's a known product. They know the people. They might go. They might jump around with different uh, uh, or get learning providers. Yeah. But yeah, but it's the same process, and they understand it and things like that. And then there's the the learning aspect in the exam. It's very structured, and I, and I think you get a, a a level of being comfortable with that, and and you're not having to go and do other things. So I think the the suite of courses now is is phenomenal. I think I'm not sure what the total. Thirty three qualifications. So How many is that? Sorry. 33 qualifications. 33, right. Okay, I think you mentioned that earlier on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, 33. Mm -hmm. I think this is the last question we take for tonight, if you don't All right, to okay. Yeah, sure. I have three certificates and currently unit A and B of diploma, hopefully unit D and I and unit C by September. And so I think it's more a statement. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well done. Brilliant. Yeah, 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 keep, going. yeah. And, yeah keep Yeah, keep them. Um, I need a new uh, card. I've had my knee bored deep in 1994. Didn't know I was allowed to use those. Oh, Vince. Um, <laughs> the, um, Vince, I think going back to 1994, so you would have done the old five-part diploma. So I don't know what the rules are actually with a five-part diploma, but if um, get me on LinkedIn and I'll find out for you. We'll 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 have a look back through the through the archives. So um, uh, yeah, Norm, we you know. Um, it's important that people, you know, celebrate the success, even if it yeah, was, absolutely. you know, yes. a long time yeah. ago. You know, <laughs> one more question, Matt. But just the chat being so busy tonight. Well, Any changes fresh. on fire certificates? Uh, yeah. Well, the new fire certificates already been launched, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it's available. Jenna, you're nodding. You know more about yeah. this than I do. <laughs> I mean, I tend to look at at new products, but it's al it's already out there. It's already launched. Um, it's very much folk different assessment methodology very much focused on um undertaking a fire risk assessment using the past standard you know based on the past standard i think so yeah, yeah. uh so uh any closing notes team and charlie from you from you guys certainly not for me i'm bearing in mind i think what sonny said to us recently he says he, he pretty much told us all to shut up and let the guests do the talking so i think i think we've i think we've achieved that i think uh, we've achieved that tonight Matt. so um I, kind I, of I, holding back and saying shut up shut up just let, let, let team, the guests do the talking yeah yeah i was going to say thank you as well Char um uh, matt it's been hugely informative very yeah. very Oh, yeah. no, I'm, I, I'm glad. I mean, I certainly, Tim, you know, if you ever want to have a chat about renewables outside this meeting, same mm. with you, Charlie, you know, obviously Saudi is a big, a big important area for us. We, yeah. not surprisingly, we, we focus a lot of our efforts around Aramco and, and that sort of area. Yeah. Demand has always been quite good for us. Um, but yeah, we're, we're um, I know my colleagues in our international, one of my colleagues who works internationally is, is certainly looking to see how um, how we can we can grow things more readily in um, in Saudi. So, okay. Charlie, if, if it'd be great to pick your brains, you see, you've got your finger oh, on the pulse problem. there. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, open book. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, let me just maybe to thank you so much, Matt, for being with us today. We, we had so many questions. Now yeah. uh, I'm sure we have more questions yes. coming. Uh, cheers from thank Saudi, you. Mohammed. Cheers from Saudi. Yeah. Um, just on closing notes, I've been following 400 learners in Poland and wow, all of amazing. them being so thankful because they got a chance, they got an opportunity. And I would like to thank you for that, Matt, for everything you do. And I'm very happy to be part of that Fnibosh family. 
But uh, I would like to give you this t uh, uh, last thought, Matt. Maybe we haven't mentioned anything. Maybe new courses. Maybe any last thought from your side. Oh, really? It's it's just that we, you know, we're going to be continue to develop new products, new services, looking to see bring value to people's careers, really, and solutions in those workplaces. I mean, that's all I can say. That's what we're about. That's what we try to do. Continue to use expert training partners, you know, such as yourself, Janet, and um, yeah, just trying to really help support in the way that we do that through our, our network of learning partners and our rigorous awarding procedures. Really, how's that? Oh, 56 seconds over. Look, hey, yeah. oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, no cool. problem. Thank you so much, Charlie, Tim. Yeah, welcome as always. Nice meeting you, Matt. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, Great, yeah, boys. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you so Thanks, much. Janet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching that live event. If you want to be notified of future live events, head over to our website. There's a form on there. Hit the subscribe button and I'll update you whenever live events come up. I promise you, no spam. And finally, we do have a YouTube channel. It's just simply Red Risks. Please subscribe and help us. Let's connect, share and learn. Thanks. Catch you on the next live event.